I also got Age of Ash by Daniel Abraham. So far so good. I mean this book is brilliant. This author is brilliant. I love that this one, I've, I've been here looking at the map. Authors, please try and refrain from doing this. Goodness mate, this pasta looks good. <laughs> this looks so good. Good morning you guys and welcome to a new vlog. I want to show you the books that I am reading this week. I am Busy with Glint by Raven Kennedy. I'm currently on page 130. So far it's okay. Um, nothing of significance has happened. We just like carried on from where one left off but in the beginning i think i said this last week that it was a little bit repetitive especially when we got to be in the main characters heads and we like when they thinking whatever they're thinking um the author tends to repeat some stuff and i was a little bit annoyed um but it has gotten better it reads fairly quick um i just didn't get time to actually sit down and read this book so I'm hoping that I'll be able to finish it this week and um, in between that I am also picking up Loath to Love You by Ailey Hazelwood this is a Steminist collection yeah a Steminist novel a collection of steamy Steminist novellas so I read the prologue of the first story which I think was good and um, I'm like at the beginning of chapter one of the first short story so I have no thoughts yet on this one and then if I manage to finish Glint the next fantasy slash sci-fi book that I will pick up because I've realized that I kind of always have to have a fantasy book kind of like on hand <laughs> um, and I'm in a heavy fantasy sci-fi mood so I want to pick up Morning Star by Piers Brown which is book three in the Red Rising series if you've been on this channel um, you know how much I love this series you know that it's one of my favorite sci-fi fantasy series so i can't wait to get into book three book two left us in a very very big cliffhanger <laughs> i need to get to this asap however i don't want to open this before i finish this one because if i do i'm, I'm not going to finish this <laughs> so yeah um that's my reading planned for this week um, I just recorded my July TBR, but I know that there's um, books that I'll, I'll be receiving from Wordsworth Books for the Sprint Weekend, which is supposed to be the weekend of the 21st, so I'm not sure which books they'll send me, so I'm not adding it to the TBR, but obviously I'll be reading at least one of the books during the reading sprints so yeah so far they've been going well we've been consistent with doing the reading sprints each month and um, I'm looking forward to the next one so it's currently quarter to eight so I'm gonna start prepping for my work day I have a busy day today so if I don't update you guys throughout the day I mean it is what it is <laughs> I don't I don't know why that sentence even had to start but I've been editing the same vlog that I edited before and my laptop showed me flames and I had to re-edit it <laughs> but I'm getting kind of like to the end of it so the plan is to finish editing it today my day got really busy yesterday so I didn't get to finish it and uh, that means I will have it up 
maybe this evening um, and not yesterday like I planned but <clears throat> the plan is just to to get it out there and then I need to work on editing the next video which in this case is my TBR I still have to find time to to record to record other videos I have I need to record my media freak out tag I don't know how people do the media freak out um, in the beginning of June I mean I needed June to finish so I can see if other favorites come up or something so I don't I don't understand but uh, I'm here to film mine and also my July anticipated releases video so I need I need to do those two videos sometime this week yeah we'll see how that goes but that's that's the plan for the week I'm gonna go and make my coffee I've been feeling very nauseous lately after like drinking coffee i don't know why um but also like i'm trying to search for the americano pods and i'm struggling like i'm struggling to find them i just don't understand um why checkers is not stocking them anymore and now it's like i have to i think the only place i saw them was a take a lot and i'm like should I? Should I? <laughs> I don't know, but um, it's making me feel more and more like I really need an espresso machine because if I can't even find my preferred coffee pods from this brand, like, what am I supposed to do? I get really annoyed, you guys, with um, websites that are not user-friendly like i get really really annoyed like i just want to shop for give me the stuff i don't understand they don't make this easy you guys i don't because they're giving me these coffees that's not what i'm looking for i don't want caramel i don't want cappuccino i don't want cafe latte i just want americano can i just have that because i even um considered i saw that take a lot has the coffee the pod I, I don't even know like pods but empty ones replaceable pods and you could buy ground coffee and then put it in there and then you know like filter you can buy filter coffee put it in there and um use reuse those i'm even considering doing that because that seems to be like a better option right now. Somebody buy me a Nespresso machine. Look at that. Out of stock. Out of stock always. I don't know, but I'm gonna go make my coffee. Um, I hope it treats me okay. I hope I don't feel sick. And um, yeah, I'll speak to you guys later today. I do have, I have a busy day, I've got a bunch of stuff to do. Oof. I don't want to think about it because it's making me feel a little bit anxious. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about it. Okay, talk to you later.
about to sit down and have my lunch and read me some glint. Here's my lunch. I've got um, some butter beans, red cabbage, tomato, avo, uh, peri peri sauce, and some pesto spread. Um, I'm about to dig into this one. I think I'm gonna make coffee to go with this and enjoy my lunch while I continue reading. And um, this book sleeve is from Rather and Said on Instagram. Hello you guys, it's Wednesday, um, just went after five, um, I just got home, I am sitting at my desk because uh, I need to get um, some work done, so I just needed to switch on my VPN but um, I've got a lot of work to do, so that's why I'm just like, <laughs> I'm sitting here. Um, I've made a cup of coffee because I'm going to need it. Um, I did say that it's currently five. I will give myself about two hours of work. So I'll stop at seven o'clock so that I can just rest, be with the family, read a book. <laughs> and the book that I've currently started is Morning Star by Piers Brown, which is book three in the Red Rising series. A favorite, an absolute favorite right now. Um, I love that this one, I've, I've been here looking at the map. Um, this is a sci-fi, so this is why we've got planets, but uh, I love, I love, I love. I love that we get to see planets now because I don't think book one and two had they didn't tighten so now it's nice to see where everything is but yeah I've started the book I've already I'm already on oh, I had found my space now I I'm currently on page 69 I started it this morning on my way to to work so far so good I mean this book is brilliant this author is brilliant the series is brilliant like I love everything about it, the political intrigue, the plot twist, the action scenes, the writing style, the audiobook, the, the anticipation, oh goodness, like how can Pierce Brown write something so flippin' good, like I, I have nothing to complain about, I have nothing to complain about except for the fact that you never know who's safe, <laughs> that's the only thing. You never know who is safe because everybody is dispensable. Is that the right word? But like, the only person whom I know is safe is Darrow. But I guess it will be a huge plot if they kill off Darrow and somebody else goes and finishes this rebellion because that would be crazy. That would be absolutely crazy. But the only person I'm really sure of right now is Darrow because anybody else can go any like there's so many shock values in the series like if you didn't hear like you're reading and you just go <gasps> you're just going <gasps> the whole time because wow wow but yeah i'm reading book two not book three wait i'm looking for a bookmark um i'm reading book three 
I am also still reading Guild. Ugh. And you see, this is what I said. I didn't want to start this one until I was done with Guild. But I really needed an audiobook to listen to on my commute. And I couldn't find anything that was like calling to me that I was interested in in that moment. This is the only thing I wanted to listen to. I mean, I had, I have a ton of other audiobooks I could listen to, but this this called to me and now I've got to put it down because I'm like, oh, maybe I should just swap. Maybe I should just swap and continue with this one because it's absolutely fantastic. The other thing I started is volume one of the Paper Girls by Brian Kane Vaughan, who is the same author that wrote the saga um, graphic novels. So this is also a series of graphic novels. So I've started volume one. I don't know what the um, the premise of it is. I'll probably give you more about what this is about <laughs> when I get to the end of volume one. So I'm currently reading that. I am also reading blackbird blackbird volume one also trying to figure that one out um but that one is not as interesting as paper girls is i'm more inclined to like continue with paper girls i will try to finish blackbird this week i don't know we'll see but i've also downloaded volume nine of saga because i finished volume eight last week so i've got like I've got a bunch of stuff that I'm currently in the middle of. I did also start Loath to Love You last week, but I haven't picked it up this week. Yeah, so I I picked up Loath to Love You, but I only read like the prologue for the first short story. So I haven't gotten anywhere past that. I'm in a big fantasy sci-fi mood but like something fast paced something action based um something interesting so yeah i braided my hair the other day i think it looks nice looks pretty good i'm thinking that i want to curl the ends i don't know if i want to keep it straight but i haven't um run it through hot water so it's still like a bit fluffy and stuff but uh, I'm thinking maybe I want to curl it at the bottom and then put it in hot water and uh, get a nice curl from there but yeah this is my hair I will continue with my work and then I will speak to you guys later should I show you the new books I got? I mean should I? <laughs> wait Okay, these are like recent recent okay so i've got the last graduate by naomi novik i've heard good stuff about the series um i got book two because i'm thinking that i might be receiving book one maybe from wordsworth i'm not sure but if i don't then i'll grab book one but this like looking forward to this i like the, this is a trade um size by the way um i really like this cover i think it's really really pretty and then i also got age of ash by daniel abraham um this is the co-author of the expanse series which i've heard a lot about um the expanse series includes Le leviathan wakes and i've also heard good things about that and it's definitely on my wish list to like uh, purchase soon. So, yeah, these are the two additions to the shelf, <laughs> to the stack, to the list of books that are yet to be read. I don't know when I'll get to these, but let's hope pretty soon. Like, I'm in a heavy, I'm in a heavy reading mood right now. I just wish I had all the time to actually read but I don't but I wish I did uh, but I'm like excited I'm excited for reading I'm excited for the books that I have so I'm looking forward I'm looking forward to these ones yeah that's it I'm really gonna go into work now because I've been talking for like 20 minutes and I'm eating into my work time
height. So I'm on page 170 of Glynn. I'm not feeling excited. It's okay. It's okay. I'm just not feeling excited. Um, however, we're getting to kind of like experience some of the other people in the other kingdoms because there's essentially six kingdoms in this realm and each of them because it's a kingdom has its own ruler its own king and in this specific book i feel like we are concentrating a lot more on the women um story and empowering themselves in whatever different way so orin has her own story and i feel like from the position that she's in right now she's gonna come out a bit more self-aware self-assured and empowered than how she was in the beginning of book one because she was very dependent on king midas and his security and him promising that he'll you know save her and all that but at the end of the day she was at his mercy regardless and now i can't even say <laughs> i can't even say what the situation is because um it will be spoiler right so yeah but i feel like she's kind of like slowly coming into her own and being opened up a bit more to the world because she has a very one-sided um look on what the world is like outside and what she's been told all these years you also see it in one of the saddles as well rosie her name is rissa we get to see that as well because she essentially has been a saddle all her life and i don't believe any of them enjoy they none of them enjoy this role but she's kind of like found a way to essentially help her get out of the situation and she's using she's using that in whatever whatever way she can and I like that she's like thinking for herself and thinking of how do I get out of the situation? How do I gain my freedom? And this is what we're seeing. So it's like all three of these women essentially are being driven towards being freed from the men. And in this case, it's Kim Midas. From the men who are enslaving them in one way or another or keeping them from essentially being who they are. So yeah it's there's a lot of women empowerment in here i can't <laughs> there's a lot that i can't say about this book um because it is a sequel but the writing style is still very easy to read um i do feel like i read slower when i get to melina's point of view i don't think i'm enjoying her point of view very much like i feel like it's taking a lot of out of me to read her part of things but when i get to orin it moves like quite quickly but yeah what can i do i'm just moving along however the pacing of the story i feel like it's quite slow um we're not really progressing as fast as i thought we would a part of me wants to go pick up morningstar because i feel like it will be more exciting but i just want to give this one a chance and at least get past page 200 um, before I start doing the swap because I don't want to let it linger for too long but I don't know I expected it to be a bit more fast paced because it's book two I mean the, the, the setting has been established already we know who the characters are yes there's new characters that have been introduced to us but I feel like I understand now a lot more of the plot that we can carry on what I want the book to to do so i'm trying to kind of like read and go buy it quickly which is which is weird because this one i'm trying to speed it up so it goes by quickly but with morningstar i am trying to slow it down and kind of failing <laughs> because it's so good like you don't want to put it down like the red rising is one of those series that you know when when there's a blurb at the back of the book and it says unput downable that is it that is it um and i had started listening to it on audio while on my commute yesterday and i just i just could like i just couldn't stop I, I keep telling myself okay at the end of this chapter i'm gonna stop but it's too good it's too good you want to just 
keep going and see um, where everybody's gonna end up so yeah that's my that's my read um, it's my lunch time I obviously I'm taking a break to read I had muesli this morning um, but after work like after my work day I I'm craving something like a warm something <laughs> well I made a um, an eggplant curry the other day and it was pretty good but it's kind of like finishing and it's like cold today <laughs> look at me and my um, my snow my snow jacket essentially but it's like it's cold today and I wanted like a warm soup um, I wanted to make like a warm soup and then I decided like I saw this cookbook uh, by Fatima Sado um, it's Cape Malay cooking so it's a lot of um, Indian inspired recipes and I mean on page two already I found something Ooh, yeah stew I found a recipe for a curry it's a lamb curry but I'm going to make it uh, vegan so instead of the lamb I'm gonna substitute that with some butter beans and um, some veggies and some butternut um, I don't know if I'll add chickpeas to it I might Ooh goodness mate this pasta looks good <laughs> this looks so good um but yeah all that cheese all that cheese uh my family cannot have or my daughter cannot have all that cheese my husband can where's that dull curry oh yeah so this is the recipe i want to make today so it's the sugar it's a sugar bean stew all the directions are here it seems like easy enough i don't have like all, all all the recipes like i don't have cardamom but whatever um i've got cinnamon in powder form not in sticks so it's fine i can use the powder i don't have chili powder but i can't use chili powder anyway because my family doesn't like spicy food like i do um and i wanna i wanna attempt to make the roti as well i saw on the next page um she actually has a recipe for some flaky rotis so i'm looking forward i'm looking forward to that um this recipe makes four to five rotis so it's two cups of flour a quarter teaspoon of salt uh, th uh, three quarters of lukewarm water three tablespoons of oil and 60 grams of soft butter soft butter i'm gonna make that today i think i'm gonna start prepping the rotis probably around two my focus went away i want to start prepping the no i've got a meeting at two so after my meeting i'll prep it start maybe preparing the meal oh what time because i want to exercise at 4 30. i've even set an alarm guys because wow i need to i need to get into working out again i don't like the way i feel i don't like the way i have to fight with my jeans for them to you know get on so i i don't like it and i don't want to be buying um clothes in new sizes so i've set an alarm for myself to do a workout i'm thinking that i want to do skipping so i still got my skipping rope so i'll go outside and do some skipping i tried I st Ugh, guys i'm still trying to figure out what to do with my schedule i prefer to work work out in the mornings because it gets me really started with my days but then my mornings are quite busy um when i'm working from home now with my daughter being at home for the school holidays at like i'm i'm letting myself sleep in so i'm waking up like a little later so i am waking up around maybe 5 36 and then i'm helping my husband 
get ready for work and packing his lunch and stuff like that and then I would want to, and by the time I'm done it's like 6 30 or just or maybe after he leaves <laughs> because I can't really do anything while he's still here um, we kind of like chit chat a lot so once he leaves then I probably have like an hour left and I'm like I want to read <laughs> I want to read during that hour and that's what I did this morning uh, read and then get my day started so lunchtime I'm also trying to read uh, usually I would also get busy around the house but I'm trying not to do that so it seems to me like the only time that works out is right now anyway as for me maybe to right after my work day go and do my workout maybe and then come back and finish cooking if I'm not done cooking because I'm also trying to throughout the day slowly prepare for um, the evening dinner if it's not already made um, because the other day I kind of like cooked two meals that we could have over um, a couple of days so now I'm starting to run out and um, I need to replenish our meals so that's what I'm gonna be doing today but I think today I'm just gonna make that one meal I'm gonna just make that curry and two batches of the rotis so this one it says it makes about I guess four to five rotis so I'll make about ten rotis because my husband will probably take some for lunch I will also take some for lunch and uh, why don't my daughter have lunch then I can put some she'll have wraps I still have some wraps so I can give her some wraps for her lunch so yeah that is the plan but i'm trying to like use my oh you see lentil and potato curry <gasps> should i do this as well what how much lentils do i have but i've got so many cookbooks guys i've got so many cookbooks um and i'm thinking of doing a book haul of all of my cookbooks I was about to ask if you guys would be interested in seeing a video like that but uh, I'm gonna do it anyway <laughs> if you want to watch it please watch it <laughs> I'm gonna do it anyway because I I want to do it and I want to share especially the ones that I've started using share what I've done already what I like and stuff like that it's nice to even see like the author and the family and kind of like how food is bringing us together and then there's like stuff to read as well memories of ramadan so i love i love this hearty chicken soup oh man i i personally like indian food so i got really excited when i saw this cookbook and um i got i got this sent to me by the people at nb publishers and obviously it's in the non-fiction section and yeah i just love it i can't wait to try out all these different meals all these different meals there's so many like oh look at these sriracha chicken wings oh man 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 mm, mm, mm. and it's simple oh, guys such simple recipes look how short look how short the list of ingredients are look at that look at that it's literally like six or oh, uh, five things you need the chicken wings salt and pepper melted butter sriracha and coriander that's it that's it that's what I love about this like it's so easy to make um, a lot of these oh wow and it looks like I'm getting hungry <laughs> I'm getting hungry just looking at this oh what was that mavru Mav mavru what is this lemon acha i love acha i'm an i'm an acha girl i don't care what anybody says lamb acne i love that. this looks nice guys it looks nice i've never tried making biryani but uh, you know one day one day we can make some biryani there's something else that i want to to make as well i think i saw that in the 
other cookbook um it's uh, what do they call them croquettes i don't know what they call them but it's like this broccoli filled um with like sweet potato oh i think i want to make that as well uh, guys I, I love food i actually i love food and there was a time where i loved cooking i loved baking and then i fell off that wagon when work became overwhelming for me over the years and i haven't like i didn't have time to cook like cooking started becoming a chore and then i started hating it and i started looking for all these different alternatives to get like pre-made foods but i hate i hated it i didn't hate the service but i hated like one not having all the options or out of the the bunch that i would buy three out of maybe five things were good i didn't like that the food had to be frozen for it to stay like being okay to eat um and i guess it's not that different from me cooking in bulk and then putting everything in the fridge right but if i warm it up it still feels somewhat fresh but if it's frozen there's a lot of water in it as well i don't i don't know it just started to feel, to feel like <laughs> it wasn't okay and i just wanted something like fresh and hot and hearty and homey and um, i feel like i'm slowly getting back into that and i must say it really does help with me being able to work from home most of the week so then i can prioritize you know the days that i'm not at the office to cook a nice meal for the family or even on the weekend but sometimes my weekends get so hectic that i don't have time to do meal preps so i'll just probably cook for the day and that's that yeah I'm, i've been talking for quite some time now i'm gonna read because i'm running out of lunch time i'm having some green tea which is getting cold that should be a timer but yeah i'm gonna continue reading glint and um the plan the aim the goal is to finish this book by the end of this weekend it is thursday today so i'm not gonna finish it today but think if i get to what my page i'm gonna chapter 22 day with orin at least if i can read this much today i feel like i should be all right i should be all right okay hello welcome to my kitchen um this is the cookbook we're gonna use today oh goodness my battery's already flashing um but i just want to open up to the recipe that i'm following today so first we're gonna be making some flaky rotis um flaky roti recipe and then i am going to make the vegan version of this uh sugar bean curry i don't have sugar beans however i do have uh butter beans which for me i mean they sweet enough i don't even know what sugar beans what do they look like of organizing on the bookshelf so 
I want to do reds here and then blues on either side. So I just want to So I just wanted to show you guys what I'm doing. I'm sitting down because I am trying to like organize um, my books according to color. Okay. Okay, my books in terms of uh, color. I might have to be a little higher for this because I've got so many books, so little space. I did consider getting another uh, book cart similar to that one over there. And um, I could probably figure out where to put it in the house, but I wanted to first rearrange and see what's gonna happen. So I've got all my red books here. I am double stacking. I'm double stacking with um, books that I have either read or books that I'm not really um, in the mood for in the next couple of months. I don't know. So, yeah. This is more like an orange, fiery, or like a fiery red. But I feel like I really want to put it with these reds. So, I mean, it's my bookshelf. I make the rules. So... I want to do that. Maybe let me put the dark ones at the end. And I've got Crescent City. I think after this I will do a bookshelf tour of the new setup. Let's see. Oh, but Manchester happened. This So what I'm doing is after figuring out which books I want to put on the shelf, I then push them forward so that I can go stack some books behind that I am not planning on picking up anytime soon. So like the great believers i'll read it one day but it's not on my immediate radar um scatterlings as well um got a uh, tassel and eleanor i want to read this one but mm, not soon soon <laughs> maybe i should keep this wait i'll keep this one out here for a little bit. Um, the mirror, the mirror and the palette. I don't. I'm not even sure if I'm really, if I really want to read this one anymore. Um, but thing is, this is this is nonfiction, and this is history. So I want to keep it for some history lessons. Um, okay, so I've got. Those one there, and then I want to place the smaller books. If I can figure out which ones. So, um, Dreaming in Color, I'll put this one back here. Um, the second book in Rage of Dragons, I haven't read book one yet, so. I can put this one away while I get to book one. Um, a burning. And that's it for my raid. So that opens up a little bit of space for for me to get to that section so 
I'm getting my coffee out of the way. <laughs> this is also a good excuse for me to actually clean my bookshelf. So, yeah. This is a good exercise um, to do and I don't mind doing this like every quarter. So here yeah, I've got that. Um, an absolutely remarkable thing. Uh, this is a debut by Hank Green. I love this book so much. I really, really um, enjoyed it. Gave it a five star. I love the writing style in here so much. So I don't know if I should keep it there for display purposes or if I should put it at the back because I've read it. Um, let's put it at the back for now because I need space and let's see what happens with all these blue books. Let's try to keep the books that I haven't read in the front. I've got Sister Song. I have... Um, Tanahesi Coates, um, The Water Dancer. I've got a couple of books that are like black and white. Um, I've got The Bone Season. This I'll keep in front because I feel that I want to reread. Um, I've got North Wind, which is a middle grade. I think I'm going to add Tia Williams to this deck even though it's like two-toned authors please try and refrain from doing this because there's some of us who really love doing what is it the rainbow shelves and sometimes we don't know what to do with books that are two-toned i love the cover Co cover is nice but i don't know what to do with it now um, i don't know where to place this book do i put it in the blues do i put it in the in the reds or maybe it could be the book that sits right at the beginning, kind of like almost to transition between the two shelves. I think that might be a good idea, actually. Um, see, I've got um, Daughter of the Deep by Rick Riordan. Um, this is more like a greenish blue, but I guess we'll transition to that. I've got Alone With You in the Ether. I've got The House in the Cerulean Sea, one of my favorite books from TJ Klune. Um, I've read this one, but I'll see if I need to put it at the back or not. If I Survive You by uh, Jonathan Escoffrey. And then I've got another one that's like two-toned before your memory phase by Toshigashu Toshikazu Kawaguchi um, see this is where like I need to get my transition because this is like a, kind of like a bluish gray teal but this is a teal and then I've got pages and co um, by Anna James I need to get back to the series I really loved it I am missing book two out of a collection which I should probably find. So I've got Tilly and the Book Wonders that I've read. I need Tilly and the Lost Fairy Tales. I've got Tilly and the Map of Stories which is this one here and then I've got Tilly and the Book Smugglers but I've seen the hot covers and I want to get the hot covers for all of these because I think they're like so so pretty. So this will go to the back. Here, I'll move these like this, and then I need a another skinny blue book. <laughs> I don't know if Gabrielle Gabriella Union would fit. Let's see. I need to swap it out with Water of the Deep. Then I think it would be good. I might have to push 
these books out a little bit more to get more space for um, the books in the back. To Paradise by Hanya Yanagihara. Not really in a rush to read this one, so it will go to the back. Let me push these ones forward. Um, let's do it like this. The African lookbook, this one I'm going to take to the coffee table because it is actually a coffee table book and um, it's got some pictures in here and some history based on the picture. Saga Volume 1, I'm going to put this one at the back as well. I am still looking for Volume 2 and all the other volumes. So, American Street by Ibi's Boy. Still got that. Don't know when I'll get to this one. Amari and the Great Games. This is book two, so I can put this away while I get book one. Black Girls Must Be Magic. This is also, this is book two. I still have to read book one. What Lurks Between the Woods. This is actually book three. I don't have book one and two yet. So, put this one at the back when morning comes i'm not sure when i'll read this i don't know if i still want to read it um i don't know i will keep it for now nine hours i don't know if uh, i want to read this oh. um night and the moon also don't know if i want to read this um, these two were sent to me um, unsolicited, so they were not really on my radar. And I'm such a huge mood reader that um, it's very difficult <laughs> for me to get into books that I was not anticipating. Um, if you guys know, I do my research for books that I'm anticipating and I've gotten to a point where I know exactly what I like and um even when i do requests i only request books that i like so when i get books that i did not request and i read the synopsis and it still doesn't intrigue me it makes it harder for me to actually pick up the book so i'll keep them for now green river i actually do want to read I do want to read this one. Um, this is a middle grade. Looking forward to this one. Um, just don't know when <laughs> I'll get to it. Um, God Hunter by uh, Suyi Davis Okumboa. I'm not sure when I got, I'm going to get to this one, but it's not on my um, immediate to read list. Um, running out of space. <laughs> I need to probably clean this side as well. Let's see, I don't know if Day of Fallen Night also like red with blue. It will be my transition book. This is my transition book this side. I'm gonna put Chain of Iron, Cassandra Clare. My phone is just going crazy. So this is what we've got going on. I don't know how I feel about this situation up here. I'm not really loving it, so I might wanna do another purples somewhere because this is the preferred view. I want to see all of my books in vertical form. Okay, that will be the only one that doesn't have books um, that are vertical, but I might, I might rearrange it since I could like push it even more outward and then pack the books behind them vertically as well instead of like facing out. So yeah so far 
so good i'm liking the way that it's turning out um definitely loving this okay i gotta go i will speak to you guys again later hey you guys um finally about to have my lunch i made a huge salad <laughs> i don't actually know if i'm gonna finish this but um, at the bottom it's just a base of mixed green leaves and then some red cucumbers some chicken nuggets so this is not a vegan meal um i've got some sprouts i've got half of an apple lemon um, some tomatoes got some corn um, and that's hummus there at the top um, i added the chicken because i wanted something a bit more filling and I'm also going to add this mixed herb creamy dressing. This is from Woolworths and this one is vegan. But like I said, I'm having chicken nuggets. So um, this is not a, a vegan meal. But I just wanted to share what I'm eating for my lunch. It's actually 3 o'clock. Um, I had muesli and a yogurt earlier so yeah i'm feeling hungry and i want to just have this i did 30 minutes of skipping today yay which is like the first day of exercising in a very very long time so let's see um hopefully i can keep that up but yeah here's my lunch and i'm about to sit down and head into my meeting hello you guys um making potato salad because I was craving it. Um, I've got my roasted potatoes, I've got red peppers, spring onions, red onions and then um, I'm going to add my sauces oh, and I've got some dill. So this is an egg free aka vegan potato salad which is the way that we have it in my household. I get very nauseous when I eat eggs, so I typically leave the eggs out. Um, my husband doesn't really mind. But when it comes to the mayo, so I use this Be Well um, canola mayo. This is vegan friendly. And then I add some Dijon mustard to it to bring a little bit more tanginess. And then I also add some form of a peri peri sauce because I like it kind of like a spicy ish mayo mix um this is the one from spur it is not vegan however when i do check the ingredients they don't have any of the animal products in here so there's no eggs um, no milk nothing like that so yeah that's this is what i will be using for my sauce and then i've got this uh, vegetable spice just to add in here I had already added um, the vegetable spice when I was roasting the potatoes. I prefer my potatoes to be roasted on most days. I boil them until they're half cooked and then I roast them in the air fryer. But today I was too busy to do the boiling first, so I just made sure to cut them into like little blocks so that when I roast them, they can cook properly. But I like that soft crunchiness of the potato salad. I sorry for the lighting let me fix this um i want to attempt to make this sauce what do we call this um this beetroot hummus beetroot and it says beetroot and white bean hummus so i've got some beets here that i boiled yesterday and then i put in the fridge so they're actually quite cold um oh i am watching Tandim Zamo. I've been preparing lunches for the next day. So this is my daughter's lunch. So she's got roasted potatoes, some roasted um, baby marrows, broccoli, and then I'll add like um, chicken nuggets. This is my potato salad that I made because I was craving that. Um, that's part of my snack for tomorrow. And then in here, I've got the start of a salad coming along. So I've got cucumbers, some um, Mexican style corn, 
I've got red cabbage, I've got um, chickpeas, I've got red onions, I've got spring onions and red peppers. And then I boiled some bulgur wheat in this little pot. It's still hot, so I'm gonna wait for it to cool down before I add it to the mix. And then I want this beet hummus to essentially be the sauce for my salad for tomorrow and then pack it up into my um, storage containers because I just want to be able to grab and go especially um, for work tomorrow and also during the day and um, if I need anything else I'll add onto it Guys, this came out so good and they actually taste nice. Can't believe it. Guys, here's the final product of my salad. So since I've shown you, I've added the bulgur wheat, I've added a few more um, handfuls of chopped red lettuce uh, because I felt like the bulgur wheat started overwhelming everything and then I added um sprouts i also added some broccoli i feel like i want to add some corn some extra corn because i don't see i don't see my corn anymore um so i'm just gonna finish off this corn actually in here because i want a blend of like nice colors and veggies in here so it's looking good uh, i'm happy i'm happy with this and i'm about to dish up into my different containers i've made my hummus um i don't have pretty uh crockery like this so this is where it's gonna stay anyway i'm gonna store it in this um and then i'll pour out a little bit as i need for my lunches i need to check for one of these um containers i do have a few i must check where the rest is so that i can use it to store um some hummus to take with me to work for my salad it would be tragic not to have it but i'm so glad it came out so good and i actually tasted it it tastes pretty good so i'm really happy with this turnout i can't wait to try out other ones i think this one is the um life-changing vegan mayo so we'll try that out they do have a couple of different ones why is why why are you not focusing so they've got uh, spice granola sprinkles which is that they've got the five minute hummus i must still try hummus i always thought that my blender is not powerful enough to make hummus but clearly i was wrong this is the one that i just did the beetroot and white bean hummus um, i followed the instructions almost to a t and i added extra water like they said when i needed it and then i and then i added some herbs as well as some paprika to it 
um, they've got tahini dressing so I'll try the tahini one maybe over the weekend I think I have all of these ingredients the bees knees dressing I haven't tried that one avocado may I haven't tried life-changing vegan may I haven't tried so this is my salad I'm gonna dish it up now into my smaller containers I'm gonna take an avil with me so I'll have this with some avil and my beet and white bean dressing hummus I'm so happy this came out so freaking good now I don't have to spend Woolies money anymore but that that um that hummus that they have on their uh bulgur wheat salad is absolutely amazing and uh i need to steal the recipe and figure out how to make it at home then i can have these on the go oh, also i was testing out if i should be using one of these tips for school because snacks for school so this is what she packs these uh strawberry flavored fruity stones so i saw the and um fruit gums so it's these ones we've got the mango flavored one and then this was also new that we're trying out number shaped strawberry and beetroot bites i like that all of these are um sugar free uh, no added preservative colorants or flavorants. What do we say? Am I lying by saying sugar free? So the sugar is coming from the fruits. So here's the ingredients, for example, on this one. No added preservatives is a good source of fiber and it's vegan, which is always what I look for, especially with my daughter and her allergies. Um, this one, I'll just read to you. So it says apple pulp, concentrated apple juice, strawberry puree cellulose okay this one does have some sugar pectins concentrated black carrot juice flavored citric acid and camobo exophone so this one is definitely the healthier option and then i usually also add um i swap the pretzels with rice cakes <laughs> this is the vegan chocolate that i bought the other day it's still full because i've literally had four blocks so far since last week which is great because then i don't overindulge in the chocolate um it has no added sugars it's made with nut butter and it's a 33 percent cocoa made with hazelnut butter said it is keto certified vegan and um it says there's an alliance with the rainforest people and nature rainforest alliance that's what it says so this is the De, um, De Villiers chocolate so i'm gonna just grab this and put it in my lunch bag um, in case i need a bit of sweet stuff um it's the full moon and um yeah the mood tends to be all over the place and i want to make sure that i'm prepared in everything <laughs> that i do this is why i'm also preparing my food uh, but this is the cookbook that i've been using to get so this is the cookbook that i was using now for this recipe absolutely love this cookbook i love that it has a lot of recipes that could either be vegan or vegetarian um, this was my main reason for requesting this here book so get it um, it has amazing recipes I keep coming back to it to check out new recipes and things to try out so yeah love it okay here's my um, salads that i've packed away everything that i had mixed fit into these four bowls i was actually getting worried that maybe it's too much and it's just me my husband is off to site this week i hope i didn't make too much and it goes off um so it's fine because i'm gonna take one tomorrow i don't actually feel hungry right now because i had a late uh lunch and it was a very big salad so this is what we've got going on i might just have maybe some uh, a small portion of the potato salad and that's about it but yeah this is my lunch for the rest of the week 
and I've packed my hummus, my beet and white bean hummus in this little container. I'll definitely need to get more containers. I have said that the last time I shared meal prep and I haven't done so but definitely I need I need a more so if you're not somebody who's vegetarian or vegan obviously you can add protein to this but I'm gonna eat it without any meaty protein I do have protein in terms of um, the chickpeas in here as well as the beans in here that's enough protein for me got lots of veggies so no issue there and yeah i can't wait to eat this i actually wish i was hung i was that hungry that i could eat but yeah like i said if you are not vegetarian you can literally eat half a portion of this with your choice of um protein so yeah i'm happy i'm happy with um how this came out good morning you guys um just quickly it's saturday morning i just recorded my book haul and i am gonna get ready and get the house ready to go to the plant powered show in uh, kayalami so we are gonna get ready the family is awake so yeah we're gonna go do that Maybe I'll take you guys with me, show you a little bit of what was going on there. Bless you. Um, but yeah, I need to go charge this battery and I'll see you guys later.